What's happening, Hope Church fam? Happy New Year. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Joe Gruber. I had the privilege, the awesome privilege of being the location pastor for SoCal um, for about six years. And about a little over a year ago, I was there and I miss you guys so much. We have obviously since moved on. We've moved up to Portland, uh, for those of you who are not aware, to plant a church. And for those of you who have been a part of that process, uh, me and Katrina with a small team came up here to plant a church and in many, many ways try to duplicate, replicate, multiply what is happening in and through hope because it's such a, an amazing family, an amazing move of God, an amazing culture. And so we're up here doing that and you guys have supported us, so many of you, uh, through finances, just your generosity, uh, prayers, encouragement, texts. Sometimes we'll get a card. Sometimes we'll even get a, a card with a, a gift certificate or just thinking about you guys. You guys have no idea uh, how thankful we are for, for you, for our Hope Church fam. We truly could not be doing what we're doing without you. So thank you. That's one of the one of the many things that I'm grateful for looking back. I, I, I love to look back heading into the new year and, and really, really try to just identify those areas where I can be thankful and grateful. And you are one of those things. And so um, thankful to be here. This is turning into a, a ritual. Last year, same exact time, almost exactly a year ago, I was there. That was the last time me and Katrina were there with our feet on Santa Cruz soil um, in Santa Cruz County. And it's hard to believe that it's been a year already. And I had the, I had the privilege and responsibility of being able to bring the word um, in person. It was a little bit different. We didn't have masks. We didn't have a whole bunch of things going on. Didn't have a global pandemic. And I got to teach at the nine o'clock service in Soquel, run up to Scotts Valley for the 10 o'clock teach, come back. And I got to see so many of you. And I'll tell you, I really wish that was happening today because I miss you guys terribly. Love you guys so much. And so, but hey, I'm thankful that technology affords us the ability to be able to, <coughs> to do this. So wherever you're at, wherever you're tuning in, whatever time you're tuning in, whatever device you're using to do so, uh, welcome. And also, um, I am so thankful that you are allowing me into your space, that you are welcoming me. And so I really believe that God has a word for you, for us today, that's going to encourage us as we just arrived in 2021 and are, and are going to uh, hopefully live the best year of our entire lives. That is possible regardless of what the circumstances are um, in our lives. So anyway, so I, I uh, Christmas is my wife's favorite time of the season. And, and I love Christmas too. I love so many things about it. I love that uh, so many people <coughs> really turn their heart toward God in that season um, because we use Christmas to celebrate the birth of Jesus and how, you know, God became man, hum humbled himself and became human and, and he dwelt among us. He eventually died for us, right? We were so broken as a people that, that somebody needed to die, so loved that somebody did. His name's Jesus. And that's amazing. And, and even though he's not a baby in a manger, right? He's not a, a man on a cross. He's a, a resurrected King that we're longing for, that we're looking for his return. We don't know when it's going to return, but if you really want to be infused with hope, think about and meditate on that and, and read the scriptures about that. Cause whatever tears that you've cried this year, whatever hardship, whatever suffering, sickness, even death and things like that, that you've experienced in life this year, there is a day coming when Jesus is going to come back and make everything right and wipe away every tear and death will be no more. Sickness will not uh, even be valid. So I look forward to that day. But until then, 
Um, we still have him with us. Uh, he says he'll never leave us or forsake us. So if you're a Jesus follower, he's not only with you. He is Emmanuel, God with us, but he's also the same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead. Imagine that, went into the tomb and, and raised Jesus from the dead after he was crucified for three days. Comes up and that type of power lives in you, is readily available uh, 24-7, 365. And so, so we have hope. We have a ton of hope because he, he's with us. He's for us. He's not against us. And so um, whatever this year has looked like for you looking back in the rear view mirror, 2020, whether it was the best year of your life or the very worst year of your life, um, God is, is working it out. He is working out all things for those who love, for your good, for those who love God and are called according to his purposes. So what the enemy oftentimes comes in and means for evil, God turns for good. And he's in, he's totally operating in your life behind the scenes. He's on the scenes. When we feel him, when we don't feel him, when we see him or don't see him, when it seems like everything is just going awry, that everything's going wrong, that the whole world is, is going to hell, so to speak, in a handbasket and we're, and we're just suffering and there's things that are pressing us. And I think COVID has been the great revealer, right? It's been the great revealer, at least for me. I've noticed that it kind of put the squeeze like a sponge. <laughs> you put the squeeze on a sponge, the good things, the bad things, everything comes out. And I think that that's happened in my life. I'm sure it's happened in your life. Some of those things that uh, the Bible talks about that, that there's times where that, that things that will be shaken, everything that will, can be shaken will be shaken. And what are, what are the things that are shaking in your life and in my life? What are the, what are the things that are, that are, that are true? And what are the things that are, that God is trying to mature us? What are the things that he's trying to, trying to uh, just transform us? Right. And so it's been one of those years. I'm not, I'm not going to lie. And um, just getting, uh, looking back Christmas. I love it. I love giving presents. Um, I love receiving presents. If I, I remember this story about when I was in middle school ish, living in Southern California, we didn't really have a ton of money. And, and sometimes we lived on the wrong side of the railroad tracks, if you know what I mean. And I was promised for Christmas, a new bike. And it was a red line bike, not just any new bike. It was a red line bike. If you don't know what a red line bike is, ask Nick Hart. He will tell you that back then it was legit. I don't know how they're doing now, but back then it was an awesome bike. It was going to be red. And so I had an incredible amount of excitement, expectation. I was dreaming of this bike, literally. Couldn't wait because I was going to. I was going to bust wheelies all around the neighborhood and people were going to covet my bike and people were going to lust after my bike. And I was going to be um, I was, word on the streets. Was, I, was, I was going to be a baller. I was going to be a ball. I'm playing. But I was really excited about the bike and the bike came. But it wasn't a red line. It was a huffy, a huffy. I know I'm dating myself. Some of you don't even know what a huffy is, but let's just put it this way. A red line is a Ferrari, a huffy is a broken down, squeaky, janky, rusty beach cruiser. That's probably the comparison. And I had a Huffy and it was probably bought at Kmart, which is no longer Kmart now, probably turned into something like Walmart. Walmart is Kmart on steroids, but uh, parents, if you're buying your bike at Walmart for your kids, um, I'm hoping it's because you're uh, struggling maybe a little bit financially, but if you have the money, don't go to Walmart to get a bike because it's, um, I'm still going through counseling for that. To make matters worse, I was not only discouraged, I was, I was bummed, I was disappointed, I was borderline depressed. I popped a wheelie, just trying, out, trying it out in my alley. I popped the wheelie, the front wheel came off. I'm grinding on the forks. I slammed down on the ground. I'm laid out. This is my Christmas. Merry Christmas. I would have rather had a lump of coal in my stocking. And for many of you, that's how your year has felt. That's how 2020 has felt. I know Proverbs 13, 12 says, hope deferred makes the heart sick, but a longing fulfilled is a tree of life. There was no longing fulfilled. I didn't get the red line. Hope got deferred and it made my heart sick. It also skinned me up a little bit. I was a little bit bloody after that one. 
And I know that's not really that big of a deal. You're like, it's just a bike. And, and, and I get that a little lighthearted for sure, because I know some of the things that you guys have had to deal with, some of the things that we've had to deal with as a community, as a faith community, Hope Church has been really, really hard. People have lost lives because of COVID and people have lost businesses and lost jobs, still unemployed even to this day. Some people, people have been lonely. People have had to spend Christmas. I've talked to people that have had to spend Christmas alone or Thanksgiving alone or just a whole bunch of different types of things. We've experienced so much and it wasn't just COVID that made everything weird and made everything hard. There was, there was racial injustices happening. There were riots and protests and, and what's happening with the political. Uh, it's just been, it's been, a, it's been a, a, a crazy, crazy year. And there's been a lot of division and, and there's been a lot of separation. There's been marriages that have failed, bank accounts drained. There's been a lot of different things that have happened. I've talked to people that, that, are, that are stressed out. I've talked to people that are not only disappointed, um, but, but very discouraged and depressed. I've talked to people that were suicidal. I've had to talk multiple people off the ledge because they were so hopeless and so broken and so discouraged and depressed that they wanted to end their life. And for some of you, you can relate. And yet I know that they're on the opposite side of the spectrum. There are a few people that say that that was the best year of their life. I know, I know that sounds a little bit insane, especially for those of you who have suffered so greatly, but, but there are people out there that the challenge has been that, that there's been so many people that because of the vast differences of things that are happening or the way that we're approaching COVID or the way that we choose to wear masks, not wear masks, or, or we believe that the church should still gather, or we don't believe the church should gather, or everywhere in between, or, or I don't like the way uh, you believe or who you voted for. I don't like your stance on, on pol politics. And th like, there's been so much division. There's been so much, so much division. And so I just want to just talk about that a little bit. I want to talk about a guy named David in the Old Testament. He was the king of Israel at one point, one of the greatest kings, if not the greatest king of Israel of all times. God actually bragged about him and said, he's a man after my own heart. Pretty cool. He was not a perfect man. He had his ups and downs and he struggled in many ways, but when he was 15 years old, he was a shepherd. He took care of, of sheep. He took care of his family's sheep. And that was part of their business, their livelihood. <clears throat> and um, he was out in the field tending to some sheep while there was a party going on at his house. He was not invited, but there was a party going on at his house. His dad, Jesse, his older brothers, seven older brothers, and Samuel, the prophet of Israel was coming to the party too. And he was actually coming to the party to announce that one of Jesse's sons was going to be the next king anointed, set apart to be the next king of Israel. Saul was the current king and he did some things, won't go into detail, that uh, disqualified him from being the king. And so it was going to be a process. It wasn't like, hey, you're fired on the spot, pack up your office, get out. But it was going to take a little bit of time. But, but Samuel was already hearing God and he was already um, going to go anoint another king. And so Samuel gets there and God's, he didn't know who it was. He didn't, he just knew that it was one of Jesse's boys. And he goes in and none of them. God says, none of them. And so Jesse's perplexed and he says, do you have any other sons? Oh yeah, there's one more, <laughs> the one that's not invited to the party, the one that's <laughs> somewhat rejected. Can you imagine being that one? He gets invited to the party and Samuel says, yep, that's it. Pour some oil over his head. And back then that just, it represented this consecration or, or this, this affirmation that God was calling him and empowering him for some divine purpose. And this purpose in context was to be the next king. And so <coughs> he goes on with his life. It wasn't like he was going to be king the next day. He's only 15 years old. There's many victories that 
he had. Um, in fact, he had a, a victory over a giant. Some of you are familiar with that story of David and Goliath. Amazing story where, where he, David, God used David to, to kill uh, their champion who was this insanely successful warrior. And the Philistine army was, was after the Israelites. And basically God used David to save the day total mountaintop experience and you and I both have those experiences. We have those times in our life where, where it's like everything is going smooth. Everything's awesome. Uh, we, we just are, we love God. We're hearing his voice. We're, everything's cool with our family. Nobody's sick. Everybody's healthy. We're making money. Like we're, everything's good. We're doing good, right? This was one of those moments of, for David where he's just like, man, Right? And in fact, they were seeing the, the, they would sing of David that Saul killed his thousands and David slayed his ten thousands. There was word leaking out on the streets that, that David was a greater man, a greater man of God, a greater man of battle, just a greater leader than Saul. And so Saul is getting jealous. He's getting frustrated, but he did hire David to be one of his employees. In fact, Saul would get tormented by um, an evil spirit. And, and, and he would be just completely disme- d- uh, just demented and rattled. And, and so David's job was to go in and he was a musician and he would, he rocked the harp and I just, just picture Chris Matley strumming away on the guitar and worshiping. And as he did, the presence of God came and, and really ministered and brought peace to Saul. And they did that for a while, but there were times where uh, Saul got really angry and then eventually Saul just got so insecure about about David and about his leadership and and he just got so jealous and all this that he decided to kill him and so so David was a man on the run he was homeless he was he was scared he was frightened for his life he he was being chased by Saul and and Saul's men Saul's army and so he was all by himself he was isolated um even one point he was living in a cave trying to get away and, and, and God brought David some, some strength. He brought David some men. They were 400 men and they were, they were a little bit of a vagabond crew, a, a tribe that, that was a little bit um, disconnected from society. They were in debt, the Bible says, and, and they were just a, a little disenfranchised, discontent. And they saw something in David worthy of following and David saw something in them. Uh, worthy of leading and they became a team they became an army they became friends and family and and these men had (coughs) wives and kids and David had um, a wife he actually had two wives we won't talk about that but he had two wives he had kids and they, they formed a town it's called Ziklag. And if you're, if you're, if you have your Bible, you can go there with me now. Uh, first Samuel chapter 30. If not, it's going to be up on the screen. No worries. And there's this, when you read through, you, you look at it and you, and you think, man, this is pretty crazy that David is on the run, that God has chosen him. He's supposed to be the next king. You ever feel like that? You ever feel like God's spoken to you something? You ever feel like God's deposited some sort of a vision, some sort of a dream, some sort of a desire in your heart? And and you start to go after it. You start to try to play that out. And everything that is happening, all the circumstances happening in your life is pointing to the fact that you're never going to be able to do that. It looks grim. It looks dark. There's no way possible that this ever going to come to pass could be you're lonely. It could be you're waiting for a spouse and, and you're looking and you're high and dry and you're just, you're just like, this is never going to happen. I'm so discouraged. I'm, I'm still waiting on you to do something, God. I feel like you've promised, but I'm starting to doubt. I'm starting to get discouraged. Hope deferred has made my heart sick. Depression has set in. Whatever it is, there's, the list goes on and on and on. We, we had hopes for 2020. We wanted it to look like this, be like this. We had so many anticipations, expectations. We, we thought it was going to be amazing. I, I thought it was going to be the best year of my life. That's what people told me. Even. And it was the worst. It was the worst. Jesus said, in this life, you'll experience much trouble, but take heart. Whenever you experience trouble, whenever we experience trouble, uh, he says, take heart. Be of courage. Be encouraged. He says, for I have overcome the world. 
And so David is out with his men and his family, their families are in Ziklag in the town that they settled. They got houses and they come back only to found their town is burned to the ground, completely burned to the ground. The women and children, the, their families aren't dead that they know of. They're not sure, but they're gone. So they've been carried off into captivity. Can you imagine that? Horrific. Talk about a bad year. There's some of the thoughts that David, man, I, this is not what I had intended for this year. Like, I, I prayed that this would happen. I, I believe this. I thought this was going to be the year that I'd be sitting on a throne, being king of Israel, leading God's people. And here he is being chased by a mad king. And now his family and his kids and his men's family and kids are taken into captivity. His city is burned to the ground. And it says that they wept aloud. And they wept aloud for so long that they lost strength. They had no more strength within them. And then it goes on to say that the men actually turned on David. They got bitter and they were going to stone David. They were blaming David. That sounds kind of familiar. Have we heard that story 2020? So many times we've heard that. Maybe that's been you. I've done it. That we've blamed somebody else for what we're dealing with, what we're going through. We've, we've blamed our spouse. We've blamed our friends. We've blamed our employer. If our employer would just do a better job or whatever. We blame the leaders in our lives. We blame the neighbors. We blame our governor. It's got to be the governor's fault. Right? It's got to be the governor's fault. It's so-and-so's fault. Oh, that person got sick because oh, they, they exposed, they were exposed. Somebody didn't have a map. Like the list goes on and on. We blame, we blame, we blame, we blame. These men were bitter and they were blaming David for all of their problems right now. Getting ready to stone him to death. Talk about a low light. Talk about a, a low season in David's life. But I love what it says after that. That David strengthened himself in the Lord. He strengthened himself in the Lord. He What? David had such a good relationship, such an intimate relationship. He was so connected to God and he was so connected to, to who he is and how much he loves him and how he's called him. He knew that God's plans were to prosper him, not to harm him, plans to give him hope and a future. He knew that God was with him and he knew that he would never leave him or forsake him. He knew he had confidence in his God. So he was able, because he knew, because he trusted in God's love, because he trusted in in his plans because he trusted in his promises for his life. He was able to rebound. He was able to encourage himself. He was able to fortify. When you search it out in the Hebrew uh, text, it, it talks about fortify, strengthen, encourage, recover. I love that. He encouraged himself in the Lord. Eventually he ended up being king. Those 15 years, by the way, he was anointed at 15, appointed a king of 30. There's a big 15 year gap. And I want to tell you, my friend, I want to encourage you that whatever God has called you to, he's going to get you there. I know people have said, hey, enjoy the journey. And that's part of it. Yes, we, we get an opportunity to embrace the journey. And sometimes that journey takes on the form of suffering. Even the apostle Paul cried out that I might know you, God, that I might know the power of your resurrection and Share in the fellowship of your sufferings. There's something that Paul knew that he could consider it pure joy when faced with many trials and tribulations and sufferings because he knew that it was forming something within him. He knew that God was using it, that all things work together for the good of those who love him and are called according to his purposes. He knew that even what the enemy means for evil, that God intends for good. He knew that he was on a pathway of transformation to become more like Jesus, the apostle Paul was like David in the sense that they could encourage themselves in the Lord. When all, everything around you and people are, are, are hurting you and there's stuff happening and sickness and there's death and all these things that are happening and feels like the walls are closing in on you. Are you connected to God in such a way that you can strengthen yourself, that you can encourage yourself, that you can fortify yourself in 
That's what I long for. I'm not there. I'm not where I was, but, and, and I'm not where I need to be, uh, but I'm thankful. I'm not walking in condemnation just because of some of the, the sponge was squeezed uh, during COVID, during 2020. I didn't like everything that came out of it, uh, but I like that I'm on a journey. I like that I'm in a process. I like that Jesus said he's going to be faithful to complete the work that he started in me. He's going to, he, he's going to complete that work. He's going to perfect that work in you. He's, he's, he's actually doing so much in your life. And the more that we lean into the pain, the more we lean into him, the more we embrace him, the more that we keep our eyes fixed on him and we, and we don't, and we don't sulk and we don't get angry and we don't blame others and we don't blame God, even though God's a big boy. He's, He's not, he's not, he's not mad at you. If you've blamed him, he's okay with you coming to him and shaking your fist. He's patient. He wants to just pull you up onto his lap and he wants to put his big, strong, capable arms around you. And he wants to look you right in the eyes with tears of compassion and tears of joy and tears of love. And he wants to bring peace and he wants to bring comfort and he wants to bring healing to your heart. If you're experiencing some PTSD because of 2020 and you're, and you're not even really able to, to hope for what's going to happen in 2021. I want to encourage you, friend, put your hope in the Lord. Trust in him. Like David, he put his hope in the Lord. He put his trust in him. And when we do that, I love the book of Isaiah says that, that when we, when we put our hope in the Lord, when we trust in him, we can, we can actually strengthen ourselves. We can mount up on wings or soar on wings like eagles. We can run and not grow weary. We can walk and not be faint. We got to put our trust in the Lord. We got to trust in him with all of our heart, right? Lean not on our own understanding. That gets me, it gets me messed up so many times. We got to acknowledge him in all of our ways. He's going to make our path straight. It might not be an easy path. It might be a hard path, but he's on the path with us. He's not the light at the end of the tunnel. He's the light right there in your midst. He's the light of the world. And he's leading us and guiding us. And by his word, his word is a lamp unto our feet, a light unto our path. He is the word of God became human. Jesus is leading you somewhere. There is a destination. There is something he's preparing you for. He will use everything. He'll use every trial. He'll use everything good, bad, everywhere in between to shape you, to transform you, to being more like Jesus, to prep you, to prepare you, to equip you to be able to represent Jesus to a hurting and broken world. He's on assignment. He's invited you to be on assignment with him. And he loves you. He loves you so much. I love the, just a biblical definition of hope is, it's hope is confident expectation that good is coming because of the person and promises of God. We can put our hope in him. Let's not put our hope in wishful thinking. And there's nothing wrong. I get it. I get it. We all do it. Like, I hope COVID goes away too. Like, whatever. But if I'm, but if I'm putting my hope in him, if some of my, my wishful thinking and some of my desires don't happen, I'm not going to be rattled. I'm not going to be shaken. I'm not going to be depressed. I'm not going to, I'm not going to be discouraged. Or if I am discouraged, I'm going to be able to rebound and recover quickly like David and encourage myself in the Lord. I'm going to, I'm going to stand true on his promises. His promises are always yes. They're always amen. We can, we can rest sure and know that God has never let us down, even though sometimes it feels like it because his ways are higher. We don't always understand his ways, but he has never let you down. He's never forsaken you, not once, and he'll never do it ever. Regardless of what you do or don't do, say or don't say, his love. There's nothing that can separate you from his love. He's going to be faithful all the way to the end. My friend, I, I just want to just share this real quickly. I Romans um, 5, it talks about this. We glory in our suffering. Glory. We glory in our suffering, because we know that suffering produces perseverance. For many of you, it's been a year to persevere, but perseverance gives, it, it also brings perseverance, but it also brings character. 
And when character has its full way, when character's developed in our life, we see hope increasing. We see hope on the rise. God wants us to be hopeful people. In fact, 1 Corinthians 13, I love that chapter. It's the chapter of love. What love is, what love is not. First Peter says God is love. So it's really a chapter of, of who God is and who God isn't. But one of the things toward the end, it says this, these three remain faith, hope, and love. But the greatest of these is love. He wants a steady diet, a steady diet of of faith, of hope, of love in your life. He always wants you to have hope, always wants you to have hope. And so 2021, I I really just think there's an invitation to, to grow. And when we grow in character, that's what it says character, we grow in hope. And 21 has in store, right? If we're anchored in him, if we're trusting in him, if we put our hope in Jesus, we, we're, we're not going to be shaken and we're not going to be rattled, right? The um, Hebrews also talks about, let us throw off everything that hinders us and those sins that so easily entangle us to run the race that God's marked out for us, keeping our eyes fixed on Jesus, the author, the finisher, the perfecter of our faith. He wants to do something so incredible in you. And you know what? Nothing happens. You're not able to ever ever do anything for God that at first hasn't happened in here. It's an inside out job. Always has been, always will. You can try to fake it till you make it. You can try to pull yourselves up by the bootstraps. You can try to do all that. You can do all the self-help books and all that kind of stuff and whatever. But it's got to be an inside job. It's got to be Jesus transforming us. It's got to be Jesus shaping us. It's got to be Jesus making us more like him. I want to encourage you What's hindering you? What hindered you? Was there something that hindered you in 2020 that kept you from being able to live the life? Jesus said, I came to give life and to the full. Did you experience a full life in 2020? Was it an abundant life? Was it an amazing life? Because if it wasn't, there's chances are you might have put your hope in the wrong things. You might have put your hope in the wrong people. Because if you put your hope in him, and if you abide in him and he in you, if we do that well, if we don't take our eyes off him, and if we don't put our eyes on the problems, we don't put our eyes on that. And trust me, when you suffer, when you go through those things, he's there. He's your ever-present help in time of need. He's going to validate that. He doesn't, he's not going to tell you, just think positive, And it'll all go away. Come on, son. Come on, daughter. Think with the glass half full, not half empty. No, he, he's a compassionate king and he will come and he will comfort and he will heal and he will cry with you and he'll cry over you. And he loves you just, just right where you're at. But he loves you too much to keep you that way. He wants to make you more like him. And the more you're like him, the more you're going to have hope, the more you're going to be encouraged, the more you're going to be able to encourage yourself in him, the more that when adversity comes and it will come, Jesus promised it. We're not going to be shaken. We're going to still live a life of, of peace and joy. I I want to feel just um, end with this one scripture. And actually, if you want to close your eyes, it's actually a prayer. I love it. It's a prayer and I'm just going to pray over you, pray over us for 2021. I'm going to just, God, we, we just come before you. We thank you that you're a good father. We thank you that we love you because you, we didn't choose you. You chose us. You pursued us while we were still sinners. You died for us. I pray that, that you, you, you're the God of hope. I pray that you, the God of hope would fill your people, fill all joy and peace as we trust in you so that we may overflow, overflow, overflow 
with hope by the power of your Holy Spirit. We give you this year. God, would you heal us in those areas that we need to be healed? Transform us in those areas we need to be transformed. Give us a deeper sense of your love for us so that we can grow in our trust, in our faith in you. We love you, Jesus. And it's in your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Real quickly, if, if you're watching this and, and you find yourself disconnected from God, you don't know him for whatever reason. There's a whole bunch of reasons that maybe you haven't made a decision to follow Jesus as your Lord, as your Savior, as your leader, a leader of your life. He wants to have a relationship with you. God the Father is so good. In fact, it's his goodness that leads us to repentance. Repentance just means a change of perspective, a change of mind. If we change our mind about him and we change, it'll change our ways and we'll not run from him. We'll open up our arms and we'll run to him. He's standing there with open arms. In fact, Jesus said he stands at the door. He stands at the door and knocks. He stands at the door of your heart right now and he knocks. But you're the one that's got to let him in. He won't pick the lock. He won't kick the door down. He gently knocks. He says, son, I love you. I love you. I want a relationship with you. Daughter, I, I want a relationship with you. Let me in. You want to let me in. He wants to give you an amazing life. Doesn't mean it's going to be an easy life. But sin separates us from God. And, and it's so simple. God so loved the world. He so loved you that he gave his one and only son. That whoever believes in him won't perish, but have everlasting life. This is more than a, a ticket to heaven, you guys. This is, this is not just you put your faith in him and, and, it's, and it's, fire, it's fire insurance. And someday when you die, you get to go to heaven. No, that's not. That's an address change. Someday, yeah, to be absent from the body, to be dead. As a Jesus follower, we will go be with him forever. That's awesome. But he wants a relationship with you now. You can experience heaven right now. The spirit of God will come into your life and make you a new person. That everything will, 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 will go away and be uh, all the old things will pass and everything will become new. The Bible talks about that as being born again. When his spirit comes in and brings life to your spirit and you're a new creation. And so I want to encourage you. Romans says this, if you confess with your mouth, is Lord, believe in your heart, God raised him from the dead, you'll be saved. And if you're tuning in the, into this and you want a relationship with the Lord, you want to open up the door and let him into your life, you can do that today. What a great way to start off 2021. It'd be awesome. And he wants that for you. You need to say yes. And if you want, if that's you, I just encourage you, if you're watching via our live platform, you got there from our, our website and you, there's a chat section, you can just go in there and, and there's a raise your hand button. You can select that. Somebody will connect with you. They want to celebrate with you, want to help you with next steps. If you're tuning in via Instagram or Facebook, you can just text, just text uh, and just say, I said yes to Jesus. Text 831 288 three zero five three i love you guys bless you for those of you who did say yes to jesus for the first time or just recommitting your life whatever it is there's a party going on in heaven right now literally that's what the bible says there's a party going on in heaven they're celebrating a, a returned son a lost son a lost daughter and for those of you who you just want 2021 to be a year where you consistently trust in him and when things get rough you're able to encourage yourself in him i'm going to be praying for you i'm going to be praying for myself that's what i want to but i love you guys i can't wait to see you hopefully the next time i see you it won't be via technology it'll be in person but we'll see what happens